Stuart MacDonald. Mr Robertson, it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. And can I too thank the petitioner and the signatories for bringing this debate before the House today, um, the Petitions Committee for scheduling the debate, and the Honourable Member for St Austell and Yuki for very ably introducing it. We've had lots of very powerful and thoughtful speeches. The arrival of 492 passengers on board the Empire Windrush at Tilsbury Docks in June 1948 was indeed a pivotal and iconic moment in British history. The pictures and TV footage of the time that you can still see on the internet show people's faces brimming with optimism. They were legally full citizens of Britain for the first time thanks to the British Nationality Act of 1948, a piece of legislation aimed at preserving a united Commonwealth. But despite a labour shortage at the time, estimated in one government survey at standing between 600,000 and 1.3 million people, it's fair to say, as my honourable friend has pointed out, that the arrival of the first of the Windrush generation was initially neither welcome nor encouraged. An emergency meeting of the Cabinet Economic Policy Committee was called to discuss the situation and urgent reports sought as to who the ringleaders of this so-called incursion were. The Minister of Labour required to reassure MPs that no encouragement will be given to others to follow their example. <coughs> but despite this less than enthusiastic initial welcome, as many of members have pointed out, most especially the Honourable Member for Tottenham, this generation would go on to make a massive contribution to rebuilding the country after the war, enriching it both economically and culturally. If there is one tiny silver lining in this disastrous episode, it is that it has cast a light once again on their extraordinary role in our history, and I join other Honourable Members in paying tribute to it and thanking them for it. But fast forward seven decades, Mr Robertson, that tiny uh, silver lining will be of scant comfort to those who have been treated so appallingly by the Home Office. And yet the appalling episode can and should now be seen not just as a predictable but almost an inevitable consequence of UK government migration policy. It's not simply a matter of an administrative cock-up. The truth is that the Home Office and the Prime Minister entirely neglected these Commonwealth citizens when she went about ramping up the hostile environment. Demanding checks at, on status at every turn, it seems little thought was given as to how it would be often close to impossible for many Windrush children and others to prove their legal situation. So over time, they were dismissed from jobs they had done for years, they struggled to access NHS treatment and services, and they even faced detention and removal, as we've heard from honourable members today. Some who went abroad were not allowed to return. The Home Office knew this sort of scandal could happen. It was not just a, a matter of MPs bringing individual cases. The Home Office was warned by NGOs, including the outstanding Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants. Concerns were raised by the High Commissioners representing Caribbean countries. And later, Mr Robertson, its own Equality Impact Assessment for the 2016 Immigration Act flagged up precisely what would happen. It is almost as if the implications for the Windrush generation were seen as little more than unfortunate, but not something that required any action, never mind the urgent action that was desperately needed. So quite rightly, there is widespread public outcry, as the Honourable Member for West Ham has described. Parliament is clearly angry, and it is quite right to be angry, and members have rightly raised a number of important questions. Given that confidence in the Home Office has been utterly shattered, surely the government must now provide legal aid for those who believe they may require to contact the Home Office helpline. Otherwise, many will simply not do it. So can the Immigration Minister agree just to go back and um, discuss with the Justice Department the absolute necessity of provision of legal aid? Can we have an assurance that no one from the Windrush generation is in detention or being asked to report? And as an Honourable Lady for Wolverhampton North East has asked, um, can we make absolutely clear that information will not be passed on from the hotline to be used um, in enforcement action? How broad is the Home Office search for others that have been wrongly detained and removed or not allowed re-entry? And what standard of proof precisely is the Home Office requiring to prove citizenship or the, the right to settle status here? What rights will there be to challenge negative decisions from the Home Office and what will the compensation scheme look like? And can we have an absolute assurance that the Home Office staff are not under pressure to remove or deport individuals through a target that incentivises ignoring or not exploring possible rights to be in this country? All of these rights, uh, questions require uh, an answer. But as a number of honourable members have been uh, quick to do and have been quite right to do, and we have to see this in the broader context as well, Mr Robertson. Because in a sense, this scandal is just the tip of the iceberg. 
The Windrush children are just one of several groups of utterly innocent people treated almost as if expendable, while the Prime Minister relentlessly pursues her now widely ridiculed and utterly bogus net migration target. Her policies mean that tens of thousands of children across the UK are separated from one parent living abroad, and even more couples are kept apart by some of the most draconianly restrictive family migration rules in the world. The checks that she has imposed on landlords in England have pushed landlords and landladies into the role of immigration officers, with the result that fear of getting it wrong has driven discrimination against prospective tenants who look foreign or have a foreign-sounding name. And despite the Home Office being regularly criticised for poor decision-making, she has removed in-country rights of appeal, meaning folk have to leave their jobs and families for months on end, sometimes longer, to somehow try and overturn those decisions from abroad. Thousands of innocent students have been arrested and deported without even getting to see the evidence that the Home Office used to decide their guilt, never mind having the chance to challenge it in a tribunal. And at one and the same time, the Home Office has commissioned a review of the complexity of the immigration rules, yet insists that they are not complex enough to justify legal aid in England and Wales. Fees for applications for citizenship and passports have soared. The list of injustices goes on and on. Two weeks ago, the then Home Secretary said she was concerned that the Home Office has become too concerned with policy and strategy and sometimes loses sight of the individual. She was right, Mr Robertson, but that is the fault of ministers, including the Prime Minister, who have created policies and strategies that forget the individuals and families whose lives are being destroyed. It is the computer says no approach that the Honourable Member for North Dorset described very aptly. And all the while, there is not a shred of evidence that any of this has achieved anything other than division and messed up lives. Since the 2014 Act, voluntary returns have actually gone down. The evidence that the Home Affairs Select Committee actually receives suggests that this hostile environment actually sometimes makes it harder to enforce immigration rules rather than easier by driving folk away into the black private rented uh, market, into the uh, black employment market as well. And it also has to be pointed out, Mr Robertson, that there has been some talk today about illegal migrants as if one body of very wicked and evil people that we should all celebrate the, the removal. But these include husbands and wives unable to secure status because of the very strict immigration rules that I described earlier. I read today about somebody who served in Afghanistan, an, an Afghan national who, who worked alongside our uh, forces in that country and the Home Office is trying to remove him. He's an illegal migrant as well. There will be lots of children who uh, didn't understand, never mind, uh, couldn't even afford to regularise their status there. That's something I'll come back to in just a moment. What we need before we can go around uh, talking about hostile environment is actually a decision which gets uh, a system which gets decisions right and commands public confidence, has appropriate oversight and systems of appeal, and has a clear and simple way to determine who is here lawfully and who is not. None of that remotely exists at the moment, so this hostile environment must be reined in urgently. So it's now essential that going forward, MPs across the House start standing up against the hostile environment and finally put the notorious net migration target out of its miserable existence. The Honourable Member for Wuthering East rightly asked about what can be done looking forward. An early test for Parliament will be the Data Protection Bill and the Home Office attempt to help itself to a massive immigration exemption. There is absolutely no doubt that stripping people of the right to know what data the Home Office has about them and to challenge inaccuracies will create further burning injustices. And as the Honourable Member for Wolverhampton North East pointed out, we need to prevent a repeat of the Windrush fiasco. So we need to ask what work has been done to identify other groups who may be at risk, whether Commonwealth citizens or otherwise. And let me suggest just to Mr Robertson. Firstly, there are tens of thousands of children either born here in the UK or who have lived most of their lives here but who are undocumented. At the same time, they are entitled by law to British citizenship if they register. But if they cannot register and become citizens, they will face exactly the same issues as the Windrush generation. In no circumstances, I cannot see how the Home Office can justify charging over £1,000 for the privilege of registration. These are children entitled to British citizenship. They should not be charged to exercise their rights in this country any more than the Windrush generation should, and that must be put right immediately. Most obviously and urgently, as my honourable friend Fred Edmund North and Least has said, there are three million and more EU nationals that we must um, look after. We must be urgently updated by the government regarding progress in establishing its system for seeking settled status. But regardless of how successful that system eventually proves to be, 
It is very hard to see how we can avoid a situation where tens and probably hundreds of thousands of them will end any grace period without having successfully navigated the system to secure a document to prove that status. And if that happens, this will be Windrush on an even more desperate scale. These, Mr Robertson, are the immediate priorities. If Parliament is seriously angry about the hostile environment, it will then get down to the business of a root and branch review of the 2014 and 2016 Immigration Acts and instead start putting in place a system that properly respects people and their human rights and the rule of law. Because the one we have just now too often fails to do so. Windrush is an awful and an extreme example of it, but it is far from the only one. Yeah. Yeah.